imagine imagine getting him and you know I kind of looked up found an audio book he'd done just sent a speculative email to the book company and then about an hour later I was on the phone to Hugo and I, I, I met the guy and you can find that on YouTube on my YouTube channel first meeting him and we did a we did a voiceover session first and then as the show developed we actually did a, a video shoot and we filmed him you know saying um, all of the narration through the show and um, if nothing ever comes of my career or my show I got to meet one of my heroes and work with him. Yeah, they always say uh, they always say never meet your heroes, but I've met a few of them and, and my heroes, and they've always been great guys. So it's I don't know about that, but th- this show is pretty unique, I think, because um, it, it not only does it sort of have a live rock concert, uh, you've got sort of elements of the circus, a bit of cabaret, and obviously the singer, and it and, and they're all original songs, aren't they, from from yourself? They are, they are indeed. Yeah, as 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 I've said, the first time we did the show. Um, we wanted to find lots of entertaining things to happen. And as I say, we did just throw a lot of stuff at the wall and <laughs> hope some of it stuck. But we've managed to kind of more cleverly incorporate. Um, so we have burlesque, we have a, a circus act, um, you know, we have... And the music takes us through all sorts of different genres. And then we have the kind of cinematic aspect mm. where... You're being taken on a journey, and you know, going through this this story, and it's it's quite a big sort of epic story as as well. So we we like to think the show's unique, but um, as as always, the biggest strength is the biggest weakness. We feel if we get someone into the theatre, they have a great night, but it can be quite difficult to explain to people what, yeah, I, I, what actually it is they're going to see. Yeah, I've seen I've seen clips from it. It looks amazing, and I know Sean is coming along to see you on the 28th of October. Uh, Sean, who does the Drive Time Show, I know he's coming along to, to meet up with you, because I can't come along, so it, he, he'll be looking forward to it. I mean, who would you say would, would be your target audience, apart from everybody? Um, <laughs> yeah, apart from everybody. I mean, listen, it's, it's rock music primarily. You know, my band, when I was growing up, was Queen, and, you know, it's quite bombastic, over-the-top stuff. So, really, the target audience is, um, you know, if you're just coming for the music, is you know a, a more sort of discerning rock fan. But we think, you know, with the story, we've we've had um, you know pin up e fifties e burlesque people turn up to watch. We've had you know entire families turn up. We've had older people. We've had younger people. So you, you know, obviously, I would say everybody. But we've tried to make the story and the show as accessible to as many people as possible but it does help if you like your music a little bit rockier not to say that it's rocky all the way through though. no it's uh, i mean yeah i mean it's, it's i i i've seen it and i saw sort of like tinges of the darkness in there um i i, I was a big fan i was a big fan of the darkness when i still going but um and that sort of it's sort of the glammy sort of rocky thing isn't it i i, I found it quite intriguing when i because uh, I was sent the, the the sort of the DVD or the video clip from the, for by the via the theatre by yourself, and I thought, hello, this is something different. We need to have this guy on the show. So uh, hence you're on the show, and I, it, it, as you say, it's, it's fairly unique, isn't it? And uh, it, it's very difficult to pigeonhole. Yeah, and I mean, with the with the sort of darkness comparison, what I would say is it's it's out there. It's larger than life. It's yeah, you know, over the top. It's not subtle. It's I mean, I'm. Then there's nothing wrong with the other the other way of approaching it. I'm the school of entertainment is larger than life, and you know a, a load of a load of fun. Not to say that I don't don't like sitting and watching a, a singer songwriter. And there are moments in the show where it will be me on the piano playing a, a ballad, or um, yeah. Elsie Diamond, the burlesque um, the burlesque who also sings, plays my um, female kind of counterpart. Um, you know, there's really tender moments with her. We do uh, a kind of soothing, jazzy version of one of the songs. And, you know, there's kind of chorally classical influence. Mm. Um, there's pop songs and there's, and there's rock songs. So it, it goes across the kind of big spectrum of music, so to say. But it's not subtle. It's not subtle, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm proud of it, Terry. Huh? Uh, I, 
do you know what? Subtlety is not my middle name, as you can probably tell. I like it loud, loud and proud. Uh, you know, too many people are in, in this life pussyfoot around and don't say the thing they really mean. Well, abs- well absolutely. And I think, and, and... yeah, if it's out there and everybody can see it, you can see it, you can hear it. There's no, uh, you can't misconstrue it, can you? And I think that's the thing. It, there isn't a lower age limit on the show, is there? There isn't a, a 14... There, there, there is not. There is um, there's a burlesque dance, but it is family-friendly. So if, okay. there are, if there are people who want to, to come and, and bring their kids, they will not be Shock. offended by, by the burlesque dance. No. no. Um, so there is no lower age limit. Well, I think Sean's going to be disappointed. Unlucky Sean, but never mind. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> no, he, the, girl, the girls, the girls bring the girls bring a an, an audience. Yes, yeah, <laughs> no, he, I, I, I haven't told him about the burlesque dancer. I, I'll be honest with you; I, I didn't mention that to him when, it, when he said he was coming along. So, um, well, she, she, she's fantastic, Terry. It's, it's Elsie Diamond. You can you can check her on. You it's know, it's great. I mean, it's like, I mean, yeah, yeah. The burlesque dancing seems to be back in vogue. I mean, it sort of died a bit of a death. I was over in Paris many years ago, and of course, there's the famous Moulin Rouge over there, which is the sort of burlesque dancing. And now there's a lot of shows doing these burlesque shows, a lot of places, a lot of venues doing it, and it seems to be the in thing. I, 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 haven't, I haven't managed to get along to one yet, much to my disappointment, but we, perhaps we best not go into that. I rather like working here, so we better not get myself into any more trouble. <laughs> um, well, 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 absolutely. I mean, I've been working with burlesque dancing since I've started doing this show and what I will say is there has been a big movement but yeah. there, there, there is a certain um, there's people that are doing it very professionally and for a living and there's people who are kind of have, having a go at it yeah and, making it you know, sleazy it's, aren't it's they much, I liken it to stand up comedy you know you can't mm. say of a stand up comedian oh he's just standing there telling jokes it's much harder than it than it looks oh yes to, do it well, you know what I mean. Big time. I, I deal with comedy. I do a lot of work away from the radio with comedians, and they have my utmost respect. Anybody who gets out on that stage on their own, telling jokes and does well, has my utmost respect, and I and I believe that. I well, mean, you're, to- you're, you're totally exposed, Terry, and it's yeah. in the same way. The she burlesque, will be. You know, the burlesque dancers that I put, um, you know, do this every week and hundreds and hundreds of gigs to to refine that. Mm. In the same way, us musicians do as well you know you, you start off you do your first gig and you're absolutely terrible and hopefully over the years you you know you develop you know a, a way of connecting with an audience yeah practice makes perfect you've you've played with some very interesting characters i've just been i sort of looked up you, your web page I'll, I'll tell everybody which your web page is in a minute you've worked with ed sheeran yes oh god i did i did a gig with ed in front of about eight people in in chelmsford he was he was lovely bless him and the hilarious thing was the, um, I bought his uh, his Wembley. He sold out three nights at Wembley. Um, mm-hmm. I bought that concert on my on my iPad, mm-hmm. and he, he must have played seven of those songs in in Chelmsford to yeah. about eight people. Yeah. yeah, and you've worked with Focus as well. Yes, we supported um, Focus. God, where was that? Hartford, I think. God, um, dearie me. I, my, my old stomping ground. My old, um, I, I was at school in Hartford. I'll hold my hand up to that. And, uh, a uh, great venue in there, Terry, the Corn Exchange. It is a I great venue. I, 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 well, we get away from the subject, but I, my father took me wrestling there when I was seven years of age. not To watch it, not to take part in it, I hasten to add. And it has a very soft spot for me, Hartford Corn Exchange. And you played with a band I like, the Blow Monkeys. Now, they're a fabulous band, aren't they? That was also at um, Hartford. Was as well, it? Actually, we done, yeah, we've done, we done a couple of good... Um, good support there and um, yeah yeah you know it's nice to it's nice to rub shoulders with these people that have achieved stuff that if you achieved you'd be you'd be very very happy happy. Uh, also you stand and watch their shows Terry and you realise how they've survived 30 years on the road you know they're just really good yeah they're professional aren't they they're, absolutely yeah absolutely. I mean I, I had the great pleasure of working with the Rubettes fairly recently they were on the show and I I, I, um, I actually compared for them at the stables and they've been around since 1970s the early 1970s and these guys are true professionals um, you know I met them an hour before the show and you know they have a little routine and they're abs- you know 100% consummate professionals and they have been for years you know the the diva business doesn't happen. You also you also played the Latitude Festival, haven't you? That's that's a big old festival, isn't it? That was fantastic. I yeah, it was. Um, the um, actually my home stomping ground when I was living there, 
uh, BBC Suffolk put my act forward for mm-hmm. uh, Latitude. And hilariously as well, we had Lang Lang, the pianist, on before us, and Rufus Wainwright, an amazing <laughs> piano singer-songwriter on. Yeah. Rufus Lang Lang was on the lake, and then on, uh, what happened, people walked across. And many, many hundreds and hopefully thousands of them stopped at, stopped at our stage. And um, yeah, that, was a, that was a great experience. I, I think the Rufus, Rufus Wainwright fans probably got a bit of a shock when they saw you. <laughs> well, you know, again, <laughs> Rufus isn't a lie there, is he? So, he's, you know, he's, but, he's quite a character, anyhow. Um, I must let you go. We're going to play your your your, your uh, title song to the the show, Last Man on Earth. We'll remind people where they can see it. It's Benjamin Bloom's Last Man on Earth, uh, Friday the twenty eighth of October at the Stables in Milton Keynes. And you have you, you've got all sorts of channels. You've got um, BenjaminBloomProductions.com. Then you've got your Twitter is uh, at Benjamin Britain. Uh, so Benjamin Bloom. And then you've got <laughs> Facebook Benjamin Bloom Music. And then you've got a YouTube channel Benjamin Bloom. So you, where. You, we're everywhere. You're everywhere. You're all around me, Art. And uh, it's it's a so um, I say people can come along and see you. I know the show's selling very well. So if they want their tickets, they need to act now and go and get their tickets for Friday the twenty eighth of October. It's a nice treat just before Halloween. Absolutely, and you know, a certain um, there's a certain Halloweeny moment at the start of at the start of Act Two, which you'll enjoy. Which will be. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this is the this is the title song, The Last Man on Earth. Tell us just a little bit about it, and then we'll say goodbye. Well, this is a song about, you know, just, I, I'll do it very, very briefly. I walked back from shopping one day and the car park near my house was completely empty and I'd never seen it empty. And I, I thought, oh God, is there something wrong? Has the world, has the world ended and I don't know and I'm the last man on earth? And then you go, ding, hang on a minute, that needs to be a song, doesn't it? And I literally went straight in and I wrote the chorus straight off and then over time it just, it fitted the, the narrative that we'd come up with the show and the show has become Benjamin Bloom's Last Man on Earth, and this song has become the title track. And thank you very much, and uh, good luck with the show. Thank you. No one ever told me I would be the last one Visiting this beautiful See you.